we know that any uh, object which revolves around the planet is known as satellite. So, the object which revolves around the planet is satellite. So, what is satellite? Any object which revolves around the planet is satellite. Now, satellites can be of two types natural satellite natural satellite which is or which revolves around the planet in the natural way or the natural objects are there which we have not made the man has not made and natural satellite is what moon. Now, there are certain objects which are made by the humans and then sent uh, so that they can uh, revolve around the planet. So, those are known as artificial satellite, artificial satellite. So, what is the meaning of artificial satellite? Those men made objects, men made objects which revolves around the planets which revolves around the planets that means those objects which revolves around the planet they are uh, satellite but the satellite can be of two types the natural and the artificial natural is just natural we all know the meaning of natural but the artificial is which the artificial is the one which is made by the humans. Now, now the uh, you know there are many uh, satellites which are made by humans and now those satellites are moving around the earth. Uh, there are many which are like uh, yesterday also we have uh, in the last lecture we have discussed that Mangalyaan is moving. Uh, it take like you know it is giving information regarding the mass. So, there are many satellites which are launched by the India and even the foreign countries definitely. So, the first artificial satellite was sent by the erstwhile Soviet erstwhile Soviet and this one is Soviet Union in 1957 and the name of this is Sputnik. Sputnik first was the artificial satellite which was sent by the erstwhile Soviet Union and it was sent in 1957. This was the first ever artificial satellite uh, sent uh, on the space in the space sorry. <laughs> now, uh, we will talk about the satellite which is sent by the earth uh, from India. So, we all know Aryabhatta India from India Aryabhatta was uh, sent and this is the first Indian satellite and it was sent in 1975 it was sent in 1975 in the year 1975. Now, you know children the satellites the artificial satellites which are being sent even these satellites move in their fixed orbit. They also move in their fixed orbit yeah it uh, for sure uh, one or the other day even these are going to burn like meteors, but at present they are revolving around the earth. And suppose now this is the earth ok and moon is revolving around the earth, but these satellites revolve around the earth from a very close distance 
are you getting my point this is earth this is moon but now these satellite you know the orbits are smaller what is the meaning of orbits are smaller that means they will revolve around the earth from a closer distance and moon is very far from us so orbit of these satellites are very small it is done intentionally children so that they can have the keen you know the good observation and the uh, the intention with which they are being sent over there can be fulfilled so what i mean to explain over here what i am saying is now suppose this is earth this is moon so much of gap is there it is revolving around the earth but the the satellites which is sent by the humans they move in between the moon and the earth so the orbit becomes smaller the revolution becomes you know faster and uh, you know one more is uh, uh, the when the satellites are very close to the moon the observation done are very clearer so uh, the sputnik was the first uh, satellite which was sent uh, this was the first artificial satellite and the india uh, the first indian artificial satellite is aryabhatta now after these also many satellite were uh, you know uh, are sent from india and definitely we all know that and now we have our our own uh, launchers also or uh, the place from where we uh, like our own stations from where we can send the satellites earlier we used to go to our other country you know we need to pay to the other countries from where they are where uh, we are sending we used to send our uh, satellites but now we can uh, you know the other countries can come to us and they are coming actually and they use our stations to send uh, uh, these satellites so aryabhatta is the first uh, artificial satellite which was sent by the indians now other satellites uh, i will talk only about india are bhaskar then rohini i'll be able to write here rohini you know the insat is also one of the very prestigious uh, satellite i should say and there is a big series of insat you know like insat if i talk about insat i'll just write over here is it visible yeah this one is visible so insat now we have long series of insat like uh, it's from 1a to 1d 2a to 2e then 3a to 3e 4a 4b and 4c r these all are the series of insat what is insat insat is again an artificial satellite and the series are there that means 1a send 1b 1c 1d then 2a 2b 2c 2d 2e 3a 3b 3c 3d and 3e and 4a and 4b likewise the series are that means the satellites are being sent you know the number of satellites are being sent now the weather forecasting which we see uh, you know uh, on the television so is the insat it is also the one of the series of the insat and it's very very useful for us it's very prestigious uh, a satellite because the uh, it is giving us the daily information the weather information weather forecasting which plays a very important role so what we are studying now we are talking about the satellites and satellite is what it is an object which moves which which moves around the uh, planets which revolves around the planets now the natural satellite is moon but the men has made certain objects which is revolving around the planet the earth and these are known as artificial satellites now when we talk about the artificial satellite the first artificial satellite was sent by erstwhile soviet union in 1957 and the name is sputnik sputnik first was sent now when we talk about the indian satellite the aryabhatta is the one which was sent in the year 1975 and after this the bhaskar rohini and the series of insat are there 
now what is the need to send all these satellites what is the need to make these satellites why do we send these satellites why so many satellites are sent what they are doing over there so children satellites are very very important the mobiles which you are using the televisions the telephones uh, all these uh, are we using the, this all these uh, we can use only because of the uh, satellites which are working over there so we said now we'll talk about the uses of artificial satellites uses of artificial satellite now the artificial satellite as i just now said are very very important and they play very important role now first of all the first one which i said in weather forecasting so we all know the information which is given uh, about the weather you know about the storms about the rain and about the you know the clouds will be covering the strong winds will be there all this is done with the help of the artificial satellite so this is what we are talking about now we are talking about the uses of the artificial satellites so the weather information is very important now the second one is the uh, telecommunication the distance communication distant communication now distant communication means what comes under this uh, all you know like television the fax all this comes under this mobiles television mobiles no fax etc like many things are there which are you know through which we are communicating each other uh, uh, like uh, all these uh, works because of the satellite now the third is use in agriculture now what is the use in agriculture children now first of all uh you know when we talk about agriculture the weather forecasting is also related to agriculture it's very very important you know for the uh, the farmers to know the uh, situation the condition what can be uh, there next you know uh, whether it is going to be rain heavily or the the rainfall will be less all these are also related to the agriculture but apart from this again the crop you know the uh, the um, uh, long observation on the crops uh, or uh, the study of the crops can be done with the help of the artificial satellites now more information can be given by the uh, satellites so it is also very very important in the field of agriculture uh, now next remote sensing now the meaning of remote sensing children that means with the help of remote sensing the uh, you know the the information about the natural resources can be uh, collected like uh, uh, like you know there are certain uh, instruments and uh, uh, with the help of certain these procedures you know the area can be uh, uh, can be first of all the area is selected and then uh, after studying one can understand that whether under the under uh, ground under the earth the water is available the oil is there certain important minerals are there so the information of the natural resources can be uh, available information about the natural resources information about the about the natural resources can be done information about the natural resources like the presence of oil presence of water presence of minerals so all these can be studied with the help of the artificial satellite now the next one now you know the strict eye can be kept on the enemies the the you know the where the enemies are uh, located where from where they are planning uh, which is the area where the enemies are you know they are trying to target from 
so uh, i can be kept on the enemies i can be that means it is very very use you useful in the army or the you know whatever like the even you know the uh, uh, what we said like the uh, when we talk about the navies also like all different fields which are responsible for the protection of our country so these satellites are also helpful for locating the position of their hidden uh, you know machines hidden uh, their the planes and the hidden submarines and all this thing so the i can be kept on enemies movement enemies uh, what they are exactly doing and looking for so these all are the uses of the artificial uh, satellite that means they are used in distant communication that means for the uh, television uh, and the fax machines and all mobiles and then they are also used for the distant uh, you know like uh, the agriculture and uh, how the crops can be uh, or is the crop is attacked by some uh, you know maybe whatever maybe the pest and whatever but the uh, the agriculture methods can also be improved the information about the uh, uh, the crop can be collected by the satellites actually then uh, weather information just now we have discussed then remote sensing the information about the uh, you know the underground oil the minerals water can be the positions can be located the watch can be kept on the enemies so that one can know that what is the move, next move of the enemies so these all are the uses of the satellite uh, uses of the artificial satellite and you know the uh, last but not the least you know the research work uh, the satellite plays a very important role in research work that means to know much more about the space to know to have the information about the uh, other planets other you know maybe the other uh, uh, like satellites and etc so research work this one is also very very important until unless a research is done we won't be able to know much about the um, other you know other planets and uh, in short about the space so the artificial satellite plays very important role in research work because we all know that they give information uh, about the space they give information about the what uh, just now no we have discussed about the many planets that how does it looks what does it has how the space is what all are the, uh, the uh, things the stones what what all are moving over there or earlier we used to think that that meteors are what they are the just sign of the danger but now we know that they are not a sign of danger they are just a part of the celestial bodies you know the the the, uh, the solar system which is moving around the sun so this is how the research work is conducted and how uh, we come to know in detail about the uh, other bodies and on the basis of this only the further studies are being conducted so this is all about the artificial satellite we'll talk about few more topics please note this points now we will talk about the last part of the chapter this is the last topic and now we'll talk about the pluto so we'll talk about actually about the dwarf planet we are talking about the dwarf planet see till 2006 till the year 2006 we had nine planets till 2006 we had we had nine planets this we all know that till 2006 we had nine planets but then on 24th of august 24th august 2006 pluto was removed from the list of the planet and it was considered as dwarf planet so what i'm saying 
that till 2006 we had 9 planets even the Pluto was the part of the uh, list of the planet but on 24th August 2006 Pluto was removed from this list and it was considered as the drop planet. Now why does this uh, removal like what this removal means why the planet Pluto uh, which is known as Yama in Hindi drop planet Pluto is known as Pluto is known as Yama in Hindi and it is removed from the list of the planets. So actually children for a body uh, which we can say yeah this is a planet to call a body as a planet there are certain rules there are many rules actually but we won't be discussing over here in detail but we'll talk about the how uh, a body can be known as planet or when a body can be known as a planet so first of all the planets can be divided into two categories they can be the classical planets they can be the classical planets and drop planets they can be the classical planets and the drop planets now if the planet has to be the classical planet then what are the things which is necessary so first of all it needs to have its orbit around the sun orbit around the sun that we all know that the planets revolves around the sun in their fixed orbit so the planets need to have their own orbit around the sun now second is they should have uh, you know, enough of gravity among them enough gravity should be there enough gravity should be there and due to this gravity uh, the third point is just connected to this only due to this gravity only the nearby area like see this is sun and the, uh, the planets are revolving around it so if a planet has to be planet that means when can we say planet that this uh, due to the gravity the, the shape of the planet becomes almost spherical ok it becomes almost spherical and due to gravity only its near by area should be clear you know when the, when, when the planets are very massive due to gravity automatically this small small things get merged over here so the, the thing is that the neighbor uh, should be the neighborhood should be very clear should be clear should be clear there are many other points also but we won't be discussing all those points so the planets can be classified as the, the classical planet and the draft planets for a planet to be a planet that means we can call a planet as a planet if at least and just now I said there are many other points also but at least if it covers the three points that first of all it has uh, it should have the, its own orbit around the sun its neighborhood should be clear that means uh, the uh, around the orbit the, the place should be clear and should have its own enough gravity so that its shape becomes uh, spherical so at least if these three things are cleared then the planet can be considered as a classical planet but the drag planet Pluto failed to be uh, to clear all these three points and so it was shifted uh, in the category of the draft planet so at present we have uh, you know other draft planets also and the other draft planets are first of all the Pluto so Pluto, Eris and Ceres are the three draft planets now uh, these are the drag planets because the size is also very small and they are not falling into this uh, category now Ceres is, Ceres is the one 
which is the smallest one. Cyrus is the one which is the smallest one. Now, this two, the Pluto and the air is in combination, they are also known as Plutoid. They are also known as Plutoid. But this does not come under the category of Plutoid because you know it is moving in the asteroid belt. It is moving in the asteroid belt and so it is it is smallest also among these three and it, uh, it is uh, uh, it is moving in the asteroid belt. So, it is uh, not in the category of the Plutoid whereas Pluto and Eris is known as Plutoid. Now, uh, there are much more things to know about this uh, like you know the when the Eris was uh, uh, known and then it was known from the other name, but now I do not think so we all need to discuss this thing, we need to discuss all these things because it is not there in our syllabus. So, just a rough idea that in 2006 the Pluto was removed from the um, category of the planet, it was there, it was uh, uh, now it is now there in the category of the dwarf planet, we have got other also uh, three planets actually uh, which are now in the category of the dwarf planets, but the two are known as Plutoid and the third one is very small and it falls, it is moving in the asteroid belt and so it is not considered uh, not taken in the Plutoid. Now, the planets can be as the known as the classical planets and the dwarf planets and the classical planets if uh, a planet when a planet can be known as a classical planet only when the orbit uh, they have their own orbit around the sun their neighborhood is very clear and their gravity is quite enough uh, so that their shape can get turned into the spherical one. So, all these points Pluto was not uh, you know not uh, fitting in all these points and so it was removed from the list of the planet and now it is considered as a dwarf planet. So, children this is all with this chapter, I hope you all are very clear with this chapter and now we will be discussing uh, NCERT question answers first of all, thank you.